Say hello to the Motorola ThinkPhone. Yes, not just the ThinkPad and all that good stuff. It's the ThinkPhone. And it's a really interesting phone because there's a lot of thought that's been put into this. And it kind of bucks the traditional thought process of Motorola is not good with updates because it's actually been getting monthly updates, which I've been pretty happy with. It had April, it got May, and it's even running June. And they got it out pretty quick. So that's something I wanted to get up front. Now, I believe that it's supposed to be three years of operating system updates. Motorola is not very transparent when it comes to putting out what phones they support and for how long. And usually it's bi-monthly. I believe it's bi-monthly security patches, but... This one's been getting monthly, so I think they really kind of want to hammer down on that and give folks who buy this phone a little bit more security, or peace of mind anyway, right? So a lot of cool things here, Snapdragon 8 Plus Generation 1. So they didn't wait and do the 2, but I don't think that's a bad thing because the 8 Plus Generation 1 is actually a really good chip. 5,000 milliamp battery, it's got this big 6.6 inch OLED display, 144 hertz refresh rate, and I actually think it's pretty noticeable. Uh, whenever you use this phone, the 144 hertz refresh rate feels really smooth. And I use 120 hertz refresh rate all the time on other phones. So I thought it might be a little on the gimmicky side, but it actually feels super smooth. And I like it a lot. So good things going on there. 50 megapixel camera, which actually takes some pretty capable photos. I was really impressed. I didn't think it was going to take good photos. So you can see from the samples here that surprisingly it looks quite nice. And it even has... Auto mode for night mode, which is nice. It kicks in. You don't have to worry about going and switching back and forth. You can have that on auto. It's got a 32 megapixel selfie camera. One cool thing, this has a software suite that's on here that allows you to connect it with your laptop. So that's something that's pretty neat. It's called the Ready 4 app, and it enables you to basically synchronize the phone. You get a unified clipboard. So if you clip something, use the clipboard on your phone, it transfers over or vice versa. Or the same thing with notifications, you'll get universal notifications. And you can use the camera on here as a webcam for your laptop. That's pretty neat because some laptops don't have a, a webcam or you might want to have a little bit better webcam than what you get with some of those rinky dink ones in the computers. So that's kind of nice too. Also maybe positioning, you can, you can take this and move it around however you want. So that's pretty neat. You can use the app also and set up a virtual desktop on your laptop from the phone. So that's pretty neat. You can access the desktop there, desktop version of your phone. Not a whole lot of phones actually allow you to do that. And you get enhanced security software suite stuff. There are a lot of things in here you can really dive into in the security and the privacy and the network, permissions, all sorts of cool things you can see here. There's quite a couple good options here. You can even mix up the pen pad and make it kind of randomize the digits. So that way you, it looks like you're putting in your pen one way, but actually you're not. So that can keep somebody from trying to copy your pen. But that's all in the Moto app. The Moto app and the Ready4 app are separate, but there's a lot of neat things that they're actually capable of doing. They give this kind of a leg up in some situations. And also, you can load apps from your phone straight to the screen on your laptop. And then you can use, like, your mouse, which is nice. Like, I loaded up Boom Beach, and then, bam, you can use the touchpad on your laptop, and you're playing Boom Beach on your laptop through your phone, if you want to play Boom Beach. <laughs> but it works with other stuff, too. So there's a lot of great things that you can do with this phone that really kind of give it this extra edge in certain ways over other devices. And it's very handy. It's got a lot of, like, plenty of hardware. You don't have to worry about it. And I don't think it's that big of a deal that it doesn't have the Snapdragon 8 Generation 2. The 8 Plus Generation 1, perfectly good. It was in the Z Flip 4 and the Z Fold 4. I've used it extensively in a lot of other phones. Very powerful. And it kind of fixed a lot of the heat issues we have with the Snapdragon 8 Generation 1. So it's kind of a nice balance in between. You should get perfectly good battery life. Battery life should last all day. 5,000 milliamp battery. That's nice. And it actually has this built-in real aramid fiber case that looks like carbon fiber on the back. I mean, it's not a case. It's the back of the phone, which is really neat. It's something that I haven't seen in another phone before. So that's nice. It's protective. You've got Gorilla Glass Victus as well. And that's pretty good sound. It even has Dolby Atmos. And the only other phones that really have that are the Samsung. So you get a nice stereo sound experience on here. Also, it works well with your earbuds, which is pretty cool. So it's been a really impressive phone for me in a lot of ways that I didn't expect to really enjoy from a Motorola phone. It has good haptics, it has a beautiful screen, 
8 gigs of RAM, like I said, 256 gigabytes of storage, which is good. That you, you want at extra baseline storage, especially in 2023. You can record 4K video. You can take some photos. We saw some of that earlier here as well. So my experience with it has actually been really positive. And it's got the convenience key. I, I call it the convenience key. I was probably wrong of me, but from my days with the BlackBerry, you have a customizable key with a little red... Everybody knows the red button on the think on the think pad on the think books. It's in the key and then the keyboard. You know the little joystick that folks still use for a mouse, like the old, like from the days of yesteryear. Well, they have the red button here, and what's nice is you can program it. And I have it set up to go to Twitter because I use Twitter all the time, so it's very convenient for me to just hit that. You can have it set up for a single press or for a double press, and you can even set it up for use with as a walkie-talkie. So the PTT function there. So. There's a lot of interesting stuff about this phone, and it makes it something where if you want something that's not a Samsung, if you want something that's not an Apple, if you want something that's kind of geared towards enterprise, business, and security, but also gives you that extra peace of mind, but the cool Motorola functionality, this might just be your quirky, secure business phone of 2023. And I had made a comment like a, a month or so ago, kind of likening it to BlackBerry. There's not a whole lot of phones that really focus on those kind of key tenants anymore when it comes to a phone. And it's nice being able to go in and do this stuff. So you go into the Motorola app or the Moto app, you go into Moto Secure, you got all this stuff, secure folder, network protection, and you can go in and check at this stuff, Wi-Fi security, hotspot security, Wi-Fi block list, mobile data security, lock screen security. And of course, it's got the fingerprint scanner under the screen. Even though I've got a fingerprint, I've got a glass screen protector on here, it works great. It works really well and reliable. I've had no issues with it. And you've got, of course, facial recognition technology as well. So when you take a look at what the ThinkPhone has to offer, it makes you think, like, maybe I should go out and buy one. <laughs> Not recommending that everybody goes out and buy one. But if you want something that's a little bit different, you want this nice extra added level of security and customization and focus, it really kind of keeps it at the forefront of your mind We'll go back in. Other stuff. So privacy dashboard. You can take a look and see what apps are using your location, your camera, your microphone, uh, your calendar, your call logs. You can look and see which apps are actively using that stuff. And you can go into your security privacy and it goes down even further. App security, do a scan on your phone, find your device, updates, Google security checkup, even more stuff. You can even do encryption, do stuff with credentialing, trusted agents. There's a lot of stuff that you don't see in a lot of other phones that you can do with this. Of course, there's built-in secure folder as well. A lot of people really like that. So I've been impressed with what it can do. And of course, it's a flagship level phone. And this chip is what powered a lot of flagship phones the second half of last year, even early this year, before the Snapdragon 8 Generation 2 came out. And of course, we like the Snapdragon 8 Generation 2. It's fantastic. And normally we contrast that with the Snapdragon 8 Generation 1, but the 8 Plus Generation 1 that's in here is actually really good. One other cool thing, it comes with a charger, a 68-watt charger, which is nice because you can use it to charge your ThinkPad or your ThinkBook or your phone. It's capable of producing enough power that you can charge your phone with it. The phone charges quick, fast, and in a hurry, 68 watts. That's great. But you can also use it for your laptop. So that's something that you don't get with a lot of phones, having the ability to charge your phone and your laptop with the same cable. Of course, you get the seamless integration that connects to your laptop, whatever you paired it with, and then you'll get your notifications. You can open up your apps on there, use the desktop. There's so much scalability, and the whole comprehensive connection stuff is nice too, and also it seamlessly does it. Once you pair it and you connect it through the app, when you turn on your computer, you turn on your phone, they seamlessly connect. And of course, you can share it with the connectivity from your phone or your internet connection as well. So I like what they've done here. I think it's very thoughtful, which is pretty neat. That's not something you see in a lot of phones these days. It's, a lot of times we get the same old, same old. It does, okay, we've got One UI, we got iOS, all that stuff. But what Motorola has done with Android 13 on here, also with the connectivity, the extra features, the extra security options, and the visibility... I like it a lot. So I think it gives you some confidence. And plus, it's just an enjoyable phone to use. It's got a big screen. Yes, it's full HD plus 1080p, but the 144 hertz refresh rate is real. It's really enjoyable. And I don't even have a special case for this. I, I just use it as is. I put a glass screen protector on here. I got a three pack on Amazon for less than 10 bucks. You're good to go. So overall, 
I think it's a really good phone. I like it a lot. I think Motorola has done a really good job here. I hope we see a ThinkPhone 2 even next year. And if you want to pick one up, the price is really good, $699. All of that for only $699. I think that's a really fair price. Most people would expect this to be $800, $900, $1,000. In a world of $1,000 and plus phones all the time, it's really refreshing to have something different, unique, but works well. And I think it has a target audience that it could serve really well too. And then the $699 price point, I think, is really, really good. And to top it all off, it's got wireless charging, IP68 dust and water resistant, and it's mil standard drop protection rated as well. So hard to go wrong here. If you're interested in it and you want to get the Think Phone, then, well, think about it and then go get one if you're interested. Again, $699, fantastic price point. I've got a link in the description if you're interested in picking one of those up. And that's pretty much it. So if you have any questions or comments, of course, please go down to the comment section. I'll do my best to get back with you. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the like and the subscribe button and the little notification bell if you want updates when new videos come out. And as always, thanks for being here. I appreciate you watching. I'll see you guys next time.